Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up your second obstacle for your game and in this case it is just going to be a box. Now the difference between the obstacle that we've got here and the bot obstacle that we're going to be adding in just a moment is with this pipe you are able to jump over this. These boxes are going to be stacked up high so you are not going to be able to simply go over those. And what you'll also learn in today's episode is how you can add in a second obstacle to the code that we've already set up. Now what you guys will need to do is make sure you have got the assets for the endless runner files as there is a box model in here and we are going to be using all of that. We've also got a bunch of textures for that as well just for the diffuse to give it the look that we are after. So first things first go to your runner files within your content browser and then just go to the meshes folder and then within here just open up and import your box obstacle. Drag, drop and just place it in just like this and just import it in the same way that you did before. Now with this you'll notice it is also imported in a material and with this material there isn't really anything hooked up to it. So what we need to do is delete that and then just import the texture that I've already provided with these files. Now the texture we're going to be using is crate underscore diffuse. Just drag and drop this straight into the content browser just like that. With it selected in your content browser Go into here and hold down the T on your keyboard and left click to add that in as a texture sample and hook this up to your base color. Hit apply and you are now going to have your box material all set up. Once again if you guys want to add any other kind of material effects to this to make it look metallic you can do. So for example for me I'm just going to go ahead and add a constant into my metallic value and set this to 1 and press apply so my box does look nice and metallic. So if I go ahead and open up my box static mesh we should be able to see what it looks like and this is what it is just a simple little box with a hazard warning sign on there so the player knows they need to go and avoid this. So let's go ahead and create the blueprint for it. Go to your blueprints folder and what we're going to do is we're actually just going to duplicate the obstacle pipe that we've got. So right click that and then just duplicate it and we are going to give this the name obstacle underscore box and then if you open this up all we're going to need to do from here for now is go to the viewport and just switch our model from being the pipe to a box instead. So in the top here in the details panel we've got the static mesh. Search for box and just use your box. Now you want this to be roughly the same sort of size as our pipe was and the best way for you to really gauge that is to just add it into the game. But I'm just going to scale it up to roughly what it looked like it should have been. And then I am going to compile this. So now that we've got our box blueprint we need to start getting this spawned into our master tile. The way we're going to do this is open up our master tile and then within our spawn obstacles function if you haven't got it open already just double click it on the left hand side. All we're going to be doing is for each of these lanes we are going to be adding another pin. Now with this extra pin what we're going to be doing is instead of spawning the pipe we are going to spawn actor from class same as we did before but this time instead we are going to be spawning in the box obstacle so obstacle underscore box and your return value from your get world transform needs to go into the transform for here because we're trying to spawn it into the same place move your comment box down to make some space and then make sure you set your random maximum value to 2 as we now have 0, 1 and 2. So it's going from 0, 1 and 2 so it is possible for that box to be spawned in there. And then just go through and do the same thing. Copy and paste your spawn actor. Set it to the box. So obstacle underscore box. Spawn transform just as I did before. Add that pin 
and hook it up to it and set your maximum value to two. And lastly, again, for lane two over here, copy this, paste it, add a new pin and hook up your spawn transform and set this to the box instead. And then for your random value, set this to two. And what your code should look like is a little bit something like this. So now we've just got those extra values, hit compile, hit play, and you can see we have now got these boxes being spawned into our scene that the player is definitely not going to be able to jump over. Now, personally, I think these are a little bit too big. So what I'm gonna do is open up my blueprint for this, go into the viewport, and I am just going to scale this down a notch. So make it a little bit smaller, just like that, and then compile it, press play, and there we go, we've got slightly more reasonably sized boxes. I still think they are just a little bit too big, so I'm going to scale them down just a little bit more and compile. And we are good to go, and that's a bit more reasonable. Now you can see that what is happening inside of our game, we are having random obstacles being spawned, and that is either being a box, a pipe, or a nice little empty gap, which is just what we're after. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything I wanted to show you for today's video. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Vertus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.